welcome every precious person yes, in this place. Amen. Welcome our family, our family. We welcome amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it in Jesus' mighty name. Father, you've been so good to us. Father, we just want to thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy. Father God, Father, as we bring the Sunday service before you, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're going to do a mighty miracle amongst us today, Father. We're going to feel the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place, warming every part of our being, Father God, healing and restoring every part of our lives and our bodies, Father. We just thank you for that right now, Father God. You are a good God, and Father, we love you. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father, for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. And we invite that precious Holy Spirit in this place. And we say, do a mighty work amongst every single one of us in this place, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bring Pastor Bob before you. We just thank you, Lord. He will speak the oracles. He will preach the oracles of God. He'll be led by the Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for signs and wonders to accompany the ministry, Father. We thank you for healings, Father God, restoration. We thank you, Lord, for divine alignment, divine intervention. We thank you for that right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Satan, we bind up every foul devil demon spirit, every hindering demonic devil demon spirit. Satan, you will leave God's people right alone now in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Father God, we just thank you for your precious word this morning. And I just want to read, family, I just want to read from Psalm 27. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though, my, though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will keep us safe in His dwelling. He will hide us in the shelter of His tabernacle and set us high upon the rock. Then our heads will be exalted above our enemies who surround us. At his tabernacle, we will sacrifice with shouts of joy. We will sing and make music to the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord. We will sing and make music to you this morning, Father. We just thank you, Lord. We give you glory and honor, Father God. And today, Father, we thank you, Lord. And we give of our very best praise and worship to you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we just love you, Father God. And we thank you, Father, for your kindness and your goodness. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you for your precious Son that died for every single one of us, that we could go free and walk in victory in every area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, it's all about you and it's not about us. We just put the flesh under and we just concentrate yes. and thank you for your goodness, your kindness thank and you. your mercy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. God, we come to praise you. We come to worship you. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus.
but I want you to turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. The title of my message today is, The Word Must Be Mixed With Faith. The Word Must Be Mixed With Faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 says, Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, we have a promise that we can enter into his rest. We'll deal with that now. Let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. <clears throat> verse 2, For indeed the gospel was preached to us, as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, did not work for them not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So when the word goes out, we can, we can pray for healing, for instance, and we can confess the scripture, by his stripes I have been healed, or by his stripes you have been healed, and you can shout it out, you can speak it out until you're blue in the face, but unless you've got faith, and what that word is saying, that's not going to work for you. And uh, the word has to be mixed with faith when you're using the word. Now just remember, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us that the word is the sword of the spirit. It's a part of our spiritual warfare. We are continuously in the spiritual warfare as we go through this life. It's not a war that should stress us out by any means. Because here we read in verse 1 that there is a promise that we can enter into his rest. You see, if you're short of finances and you've got bills to be paid, or if you're under attack in your body and you're worried or concerned about it, you don't have to be. In Philippians chapter 4 it says there, Be anxious for nothing, but in all prayer and supplication make your request known to God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind. And that's a promise from God. But if you are using the word and you're believing for healing or you're believing for provision, it's not going to work unless you mix faith with it. And it's so important for us to know that. But first, before we can really go in, I don't think it'll, it'll keep you too long today, but we just need to understand faith a bit better. And I'd like us to go over to Hebrews chapter 11, because in Hebrews chapter 11, it gives us, you know, you can get all these different preachers and pastors, I'm one of them, that'll give you our own interpretation of faith, but this is the scriptural interpretation of faith. Dahl, I'm going to read it from the New King James Version. Then I think you must read it from the NIV, which will be just uh, the, uh, the first verse of chapter 11. I'll read it first. And it says here, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Would you like to just read it from the NIV? Yes, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. There we go. More or less the same thing. But it's a, it's a sure thing. Actually, my I like to say the faith is acting on what you believe. If you believe that God has promised it, if you believe you're going to receive it, then you act on that. One of those actions is having peace. Having peace. We just read it just now in Hebrews chapter 4. God promises us peace. In Philippians chapter 4, God also promises us, us peace. And he tells us further there to be anxious for nothing. Amen. In Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 11, we've just read that faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it elders obtained a good testimony. Now this next verse, catch this. By faith... We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. God didn't create the worlds or the heavens and the earth, whatever, 
He didn't do that with things that are seen. There was nothing there. It was, there was a void over the earth. And God came and he said, let there be lights. And there was lights. He spoke it. He spoke the word into being. Now in the beginning, when there was the creation, this isn't in my notes, but for some reason God wants me to share this with you. In the beginning, when God created, and he created man, he said, let us create man in our image, plural. And if you go into it and you study it, I don't have time to bring it to you, your attention today, you've just got to trust me. But what he was speaking about, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three of them, the triune God, was there present at the beginning when he created. And he created us in their image. And we are triune beings. We are spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. That's where we come. But it's our spirit which is identical to God's spirit. In Jesus' name. Now in John chapter 1, let's go there again. This isn't in my, isn't in my notes. I hope, <laughs> Lord, is this going to be one of those where you take me up and down? John chapter 1. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God spoke the Word and He created. But let me tell you something. If we go down further, and we go down to verse 14, and it says, and the Word, that's the Word that was in the beginning, and the Word that was with God, and the Word was God, and in verse 14 it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the angel appeared to Mary and said, and his name shall be Emmanuel, which translated is God with us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And here it says in verse 14, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. In Jesus' name. So Jesus is the living Word. Jesus is the living Word. And this Bible, and your Bible, all the Bibles that were uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is the written word. And the written word is all about the living word. And in fact, this written word is also, because it's all about the living word, it's life itself. It's also a living word. But that's another message for another time. But this word, in this word there is salvation. In this word there is conviction. In this word, there's the power to heal, the power to deliver in Jesus' name. The word is so important. And we cannot just home in on certain bits of the word. We have to read the full gospel of Jesus Christ. And the full gospel of Jesus Christ is not just the New Testament. When you get into this Bible and you study this Bible, you'll find that the full gospel of Jesus Christ it's from Genesis chapter 1 right the way through to the very last verse of the book of the Revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here we saw in Hebrews, let me get back there quickly. We saw in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 that God He formed the worlds by the word. He created the worlds or the earth, heaven and earth, everything that is created. It was created by God by speaking the word. He said, let there be light and there was light. He separated the, the, the earth and the sky and the seas and the land by speaking the word all the time. When he created man in their image, he did it with his word in Jesus mighty name. Surprisingly enough, only women were not created 
by his word. Only remember, no created by his word. And what he did there was he put man to sleep and he took a rib from his side and out of the rib he created a woman. I have my own understanding of that, but I don't want to say anything in case I get stoned. <laughs> right, let's go to James chapter 2. It's just a bit further on from Hebrews. In James chapter 2, verse 14. It says there, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? Can faith save him? Uh, do 14 to 26, all right. Verse 15, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and if one of you, you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? That's also faith by itself. If it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe that and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? And then it goes on to speak about Abraham. And now Abraham demonstrated his faith by taking his son Isaac to sacrifice him. And God stopped the sacrifice because Abraham demonstrated his faith. But here it clearly says, faith without works is dead. Or faith without corresponding actions is also dead. That's why the healing evangelist, when he's praying for people, um, uh, sometimes he will he, suppose a person's got a dislocated shoulder or something like that, and uh, the evangelist will say to him, he'll pray for him, and he'll say, now move your arm. Is it healed? Is it hurting? And things like that. Or if it's somebody in a wheelchair, he'll tell them to get up out of the wheelchair. And the reason he's doing that is because it's a demonstration of corresponding actions to the faith that is operating at that particular time. Of course, you've got to be very careful. You can be, uh, you can be a show-off evangelist and it can backfire on you. But you've got to, you really got to be listening to God. I remember once in, in front of the whole of the Reamer Church, and I prayed for a guy who actually had a dislocated shoulder. Yeah. I think it was I, yes. friend of Pastor Ray. And I told him, uh, I, I, I told him, take your arm out of the sling. He took his arm out of the sling and he was hanging on to his arm. And I laid hands on him and I prayed for him. And the Lord told me, take his arm and yank it into the air. And I grabbed, grabbed hold of his arm, I yanked it into the air and he screamed. <laughs> but after he stopped screaming, and he was totally healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. You see, there has to be corresponding actions. Now, using the word mixed with faith is also corresponding actions or faith with works. It's a faith work. Learning to, Romans chapter 12 tells us we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And renewing your mind to God's way of doing things, renewing your mind to a life of faith, that is works of faith. Learning to, to speak positive all the time and when you, you, you get the negative thought or a negative feeling or you, you say a negative word, it might sound silly, but I, what I do is I always replace it with a positive word, a word of faith. And doing that, you're fighting the spiritual war with faith. And what you're doing is you are actually operating in faith works. Are you with me? Reading the Bible, confessing the scriptures over you. By his stripes I am healed. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Doing things like that, they are faith works. And you know what? The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 4. In fact, is it Romans chapter 4? 
Is it Romans chapter 4? Let me just have a look and see. I don't think it is Romans chapter 4. I've got a feeling it's Romans chapter 7. But anyway, in Romans somewhere, that's, it says there that um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I do need to go to Romans chapter 4 just now. So faith comes by hearing by hearing and hearing the word of God. I think it's Romans 9, 17. Let's have a look and see. For some reason. Maybe. No, it's not. It's all right, I'll find it. I will. I will find it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, but let's not waste time. Uh, I used to know that scripture off by heart. But okay. So th those are our faith works. Those are, you see, a lot of people will say you cannot earn your salvation and you cannot earn your salvation. Salvation comes simply by grace. God's grace coming upon us. God's grace came upon me in 1980. I didn't deserve to be saved. According to the word of God, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. Because God is not just a God of compassion, a God of love, and a God of mercy, but he's a God of justice. And he's 100% in each of those characters. So because he's 100% a God of justice, a price has to be paid for sin, for disobedience to God. And I should have gone to the cross. I should have died. Because of my sin. But God loved me so much. That he paid the price for me instead. In Jesus name. So his grace came upon me. For my salvation. Now his grace is on every man on this earth. The Bible says that God would have it. That all men be saved. So why aren't all men saved? Romans 10 17. Thank you Pat. So why aren't all men saved? All men aren't saved because God gives us the freedom to choose. He gives us the freedom of choice, otherwise we would be robots. God never created hell for, belief, for people. God created hell for Satan and his demons. But at the moment you people re, uh, choose to reject God and do things their own way without realizing it, they're putting themselves in submission to the devil. And because of that, they're going to spend eternity with him. And that's why they wind up in hell. But praise God, he's got a plan for us. And if we receive that plan and we believe that plan and we accept God's good grace as it flows into our life and we receive salvation by faith, in Jesus' name. And he's quite right in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we need to be in the word all the time. We need to be reading it. We need to be meditating on it. We need to be speaking it and confessing it over our lives all the time. Those are faith works in Jesus name somebody comes to me and they ask me to pass will you pray for me because I'm sick and all the rest of it I don't turn around and say to them no I can't pray for you because otherwise that's works there are works of faith and I'll say yes of course I will because I believe what the Bible tells me in Mark chapter 16 that believers will lay hands on the sick and they will recover and so I lay hands on them believing that they will recover in Jesus mighty name and I've seen too many people get healed I've seen too many people recover to have any doubt about it at all in Jesus name in Romans chapter 4 verse 16 God's faith, which is the faith that Abraham had, does not walk according to what you see, but according to what you believe. All right. 
God's faith, which is the faith that Abraham had, does not walk according to what you see, but according to what you believe. Let's quickly go to 2 Corinthians, just a couple of pages over from Romans. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name. That's why Pastor Bob could be walking down the street with a big carbuncle on the side of his name, uh, on the side of his neck, and the neighbor calls out to him, Hello, Pastor Bob, how are, you, how are you today? How's that neck of yours? Praise God, I'm healed. In Jesus' name. I'm not looking at what I see, I'm looking at what I believe. I'm looking at what the Word of God says, that by His stripes I have been healed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And then in Mark chapter 11, let's go there. It's important that you grasp this today, that you have to mix the Word of God with faith when you're speaking it over your life and over the lives of other others for you to see results. That's why it's important if you're sick, get into the Word of God Find out what the Word of God says about it. Keep reading it. Get revelation of it. Start believing it. And you start to see results. If you're in lack, start looking at what the Word of God says. Deuteronomy chapter 30 or 31. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm going over, I'm not going under. I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the workplace. I'm more blessed in the home. You keep confessing these things over yourself. And you see, eventually you start to get the results that you desire. In Jesus' name, your faith starts to push all the negative attacks on your life out the way. And it starts to open the door to the blessings of God. In Jesus' name. Mark chapter 11 verse 22 says this. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. In the original scriptures... In the original translation, it literally said, have the God kind of faith. And then he goes on to say in verse 23, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt, mustn't have any doubt, does not doubt in his heart, but believes, strong in belief, faith is acting on what you believe, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe. When do you believe? You believe when you're asking. Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe. At the time you're asking for it, believe that you receive them. And you will have them. Father God, I just need that financial breakthrough. I need to get this paid and I need to get that paid. In Jesus' name, I'm not being slack. I'm not wasting the money at all, Lord. I'm trusting you. I've got faith in you. And I thank you, Lord, that as I ask you for it, I believe I receive it. And I thank you for it, Lord. And then you keep on watering that seed that you just spoke and the seed of the word. You keep on watering it with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. And you'll see it will come through. I can tell you now there's been times when I've got to a Friday and I've had things to pay by Friday afternoon and I've had no money whatsoever. Lee and I live by faith day to day. And I've had nothing and I've prayed and I've asked God and I believed I received it. And by that afternoon it was there. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And when it's a God kind of faith, he says you only need faith as small as a mustard seed. You see, it's not the size of the faith, it's the quality of the faith. It's the quality of the faith. And that's where we need to learn. I'm going to use a word which sounds slack. It sounds not very religious, if you like. But you need to practice the word. You need to keep on practicing all the time. You need to get spend time during the day somewhere where you can go quiet on your own, close the door, and even if it's only for five minutes, just get down on your knee and pray. And then be quiet and listen in Jesus' name. 
in Jesus' name. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 14. I think I mentioned this last week or the week before, but we're going to just mention it again. Matthew chapter 14, let's go to verse 13. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place. Matthew 14, verse 13. To a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude. And he was moved with compassion for them. And he healed their sick. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever according to the scriptures. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He was healing the sick then. He's healing the sick now, and he will continue to heal the sick. Verse 15. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away, and they may go into the villages and buy for themselves food. Now they've been there all afternoon in the heat of the day. Jesus has been healing them. And the disciples have come and said to Jesus, send them away. Let them go into the villages so they can buy food for themselves because they're hungry. Verse 16, but Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And the disciples said to him, we have only here five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples started to give them out to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now this started with five loaves, two fish. They fed all the multitudes. Now listen to this, verse 21. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. So you could say there's anything from 10,000 onwards there. And all they had was five fish, five loaves of bread and two fish. And Jesus prayed, gave thanks, broke it, and then said, told the disciples, right, now go and give dish it out. Notice the disciples never said, well, what happened? this isn't going to last long. They just carried on, giving it out, walking along amongst the crowd, giving them pieces of bread and giving them some fish. And it just kept on being replaced and kept on being replaced. But the point that I'm trying to make here this morning is this. A big mistake of what we do is we do, we shouldn't look at what we don't have, but we should be looking at what we do have. In other words, what you, what you need, you trust in God for, and you're thanking God for it, and you believe that you receive it, but what you mustn't do is, for instance, if you're not living in a very nice house, or you need a bigger house because you've got more kids or something like that, stop looking at the neighbor's house who's got a big mansion down the road. Stop doing that. Take your concern to God Tell God, this is my concern. This is what I've got. Increase it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Increase it. Just like Jesus did. We mustn't always be looking at what we don't have. Sometimes we look, I need, what can I think of now? I need, I need, you know, even with the church, when we started the church and we started the ministry and I sat down there and I thought to myself, but well, I haven't got this and I haven't got that and I haven't got the other thing. And the Lord started screaming this at me. Look at what you have got. And I started playing around with the old radio I got and I started playing around with this that I got and eventually I started building and putting things together and then gradually as we moved along, God started multiplying it and increasing it and we've got what we've got today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, let's go to Romans chapter 19. We're nearly finished. Romans chapter 19. And then I'll sum it up. Romans chapter 19.
Romans chapter 19 and verse 17. Sorry, it can't be Romans 19 and verse 17. What am I talking about? Oh, yes, it's Romans chapter 10 and what was it? 17 verse 17. Yeah, we were there just now. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've got to understand the word is the fuel for faith. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You, may, you know, it's good to listen to people's testimonies. It's good to listen and be present when, when uh, the, there's healings taking place and there's supernatural manifestations of God in the meeting. I've been in many meetings and it's good and it's lovely and it does. It helps to build your faith, but it will only help to build your faith if it's based on the Word of God. It always must be based on the Word of God. Lee will tell you, I'm a stickler for this. You will hear prophet so-and-so and prophet so-and-so. How many people have prophesied that we're going into World War III because of what's going on in Ukraine? What a load of poppycock. What a load of nonsense. Get into the Bible. Read what the Bible says about World War III. And you'll find out you're way missing it right off the beat. And there's so many people that come out and they prophesy, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Never mind Russia and Ukraine, but all sorts of things. I remember not long ago, there was a guy down, the, down on the road going to Greenstone there, and he had a big sign up saying, the end is coming on whatever date it was he had on there, and all the rest of it, and, uh, and, and you, you need to gather your things together, and the end is near, and all this. And I said to Lee, that's contrary to the Scriptures. It doesn't say that in the Scripture. And that, that time came and went and passed. And it's not that I'm trying to be a big hoo-ha. This is a big hoo-ha here. We need to make sure that whatever we're hearing, if we're going to believe it and accept it, it must line up with the Word of God. I don't know why over the years of ministry, I have prayed for many, many people and they've received healing. I've prayed for a dead man who came back to life. I've done these things, but I've also prayed for people to be healed, and they never got healed. They even died and went on to be the, with the Lord. We even did their funeral and ministered to the families. And one day when I get into heaven, one of the first questions I will be asking is, why is it that some got healed and some didn't get healed? But the point is this, the Bible says, by his stripes, we have been healed and we can obtain that healing. We can receive that healing. And because of that, I will continue to pray for the sick when they ask me to pray for them for their healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You see, the Bible says that we are blessed. We are blessed coming in. We are blessed going out. And Ephesians, let me go to Ephesians. I'm pretty sure it's Ephesians chapter 1. Let me read this to you quickly. And verse, chapter 1 and verse 3, listen to what it says there. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, already done it, blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. He's already blessed us with all the heavenly blessings and the heavenly blessings include healing, provision, love and peace. All these things. He's already blessed us. So why is it that some people are not experiencing that blessing? I don't know. I really don't know. All I know is that the Bible says it. I believe it. And that settles it. So I will keep on praying for it and believing for it in Jesus mighty name. God's word is the sword of the spirit as I told you. God's word is life. In God's word is deliverance, salvation, healing, health, provision and peace and so many other things in God's word. And faith comes from hearing the word. And faith is acting on what you believe. And you know if there's something here that you're reading in connection with your situation and you're finding it so hard to believe, just keep on reading it. Read it over and over again. Keep on reading it and the penny will drop. That's what revelation is. The penny's dropped. 
and you get the revelation. Boom. I see her in front of you. There's sometimes the scriptures I've been reading for years. And then one day I open them and I'm reading it and I get a revelation of what I'm reading. And I get so excited. I've been reading it for years. Everything must be based on the word of God. And if you try to operate a faith that is not based on or mixed with the word of God, your faith will be fruitless. But I believe God wants us all to be full of the fruit of faith. God wants us all to experience all these promises, which are yes and amen. And the Bible even calls them precious promises. God wants us to receive them and to have them for ourselves in our own lives and even for us to share it with others. Because God wants us to be blessed to be a blessing. God wants us to be blessed to be a blessing. I praise God that we're a small church. We can have our church services here in comfort. I praise God that uh, uh, he meets our every need. All the expenses get paid for and are met by the ministry because of faithful believers that are always contributing into the church. And Jesus' name has got nothing to do with me, but everything to do with God in Jesus' name. And we need to just operate in that faith all the time and keep on uh, 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 mixing the Word of God with our faith. Now, with the Word. Now, a lot of preachers, they use this scripture when it comes to finances. But it doesn't. It means everything in the Gospel. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it will be given back to you. Good measure. Press down. And shaken together. Yes, he's talking about our finances. That's why I'm, I give all the time, every opportunity I can. I give. My wife is a big giver. And uh, we give and we give and we receive and we receive in Jesus' name. But he's also talking about love. Give love and you receive love back. Don't be shy to forgive. Be quick in your forgiveness. And when you make a mistake, you receive forgiveness back. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give fellowship. Give time for fellowship. And you receive fellowship back. Give God some of your precious time. And you'll definitely receive God's beautiful time back into your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do it right here. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And now we come to the the supper table, the time of the communion, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says there, on the night that Jesus was betrayed, on the night he was betrayed, do you know he sat and he had communion with the one who was going to betray him? Because he said to the disciples, one of you is going to betray me. And they said, who is it? And he said, the one who dips in the sop with me is the one that will betray me. And Judas was sat right there. But Jesus still had supper with him. He still broke bread with him. And he said, whenever you do this, do it in remembrance of me. But before, just after that, it seems to be the wrong way around. Just after that, it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that a man ought to examine himself before he partakes. And he says it's better that he examines himself rather than to be examined or judged by God. And he says, because if you take it with the wrong motivation, if you take this in the wrong heart manner, you'll be guilty. You'll be guilty of what you're partaking of. What is he saying? He's saying you need to understand the reason for taking this. Now, we come out of a denominational church where when we had to take this, you had to be perfect. You first had to go and confess your sins before you could have communion so that you were clean, if you like. But it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. It means if you want to get right with God, come and partake of it. Come and partake of the work of the cross. Come and receive Jesus as he died on the cross for your salvation. Come and believe and demonstrate your belief by partaking of this that he shed his blood for your salvation. Come and believe that on the way to the cross he was beaten so that you could be healed in Jesus' name. And as we take of this bread, 
Jesus, you said that we must take of it and do it in remembrance. And we remember the price that you paid for our healing. We remember that your broad body, body was so badly bruised in Jesus' name so that we could be healed. So let's partake of this together. And then he took out the cup. The cup of the new covenant, the Bible calls it. And he picked up the cup. He said, this is the cup. This is the cup of the Jews for years and years and years. When they celebrated Passover, at the head of the table, there was a place with a cup there. And nobody was allowed to touch it because that cup was coming for the coming Messiah. And Jesus, he took that cup. And he says, drink from this cup. This is the cup of the new covenant. The cup of grace. You don't deserve it, but I'm paying the price so that you can receive it. And he died so that you and I can live in Jesus' name. Let's drink together. So Father God, thank we just thank you, Lord, for every precious person here, Lord, in this prayer request book, Father God. You know them by name, Father God. Father, you know their needs, Father. They've yes. written it down, Father God, and you said it is done. It is done. It is done. So Father God, we just thank you, even as our precious family members, brothers, sisters, nieces and nephews, our church families, Father God, as they go out this week, Father God, that good will come upon them, Lord. Father, that their prayer requests will be met, Father God, because, Lord, you are their shepherd. They will not lack, Father God, in anything that they need, Father. They can come to you, Father God. You'll open up a door, Father God. Even when there seems to be no door, you'll make a way for them, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, for that right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, the blind eyes will open, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear, Father God. The oppressed and depressed will be set free, Father God. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name, Father. We thank you, Lord, for a double portion upon this church and its people, its family members, uh, church family members, Father. We just thank you for that right now. Father, we pray for uh, Debbie. We pray for Demi. We pray for Mark. We pray for Keegan. We pray for... Uh, uh, Alvain, we pray, Lord, for the precious people that need healing in their bodies. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We pray for Jenny as well. We pray for um, uh, Cliff and Ina, Father God. Every precious person crying out to you this morning, Father. And they look at themselves and they see things haven't worked out the way it's supposed to have worked out, Father. We pray, Lord, you are change their circumstances, heal their marriages, restore them to their rightful state. Father, heal their bodies. We curse cancer. We curse epilepsy. We curse grief, pain, sorrow. We curse it in Jesus' name. We curse lack and poverty, anxiety. We, we curse it right now in Jesus' name and we break every uh, assignment of the enemy over our lives and our families and those that we pray for daily in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that the blessing of the Lord makes rich and he adds no sorrow to it. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you, Lord, for divine alignment, divine intervention, supernatural wealth transfer, supernatural death cancellation. We thank you, Father, for that right now. In Jesus' mighty name, and we expect something great to happen to us this week as we go out, Father God. We just thank you, Lord. It's good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men fall back into our bosoms. Father, we just thank you for the hundredfold return in Jesus' mighty Jesus name. name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if you've been watching this on video, in Jesus' name, just pray, uh, put your hand out towards the camera. Pet. Father God, we bring every precious person to you. Father Amen. God, we just thank you, Lord, that you meet all their needs according to, in, according to riches and glory in Christ. Jesus, Father, that you came to give them life and life in abundance, Lord, that you came to answer their prayers. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you restore them to their rightful state. Father God, that you are their shepherd and they will not lack. You are their healer. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. We also did I pray for Demi. Father, we just pray for Demi. And we just thank you, Lord, that kneecap 
as re uh, return to its, its rightful place, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. And so until the next time, God bless you. The Lord go with you. And yes. just remember, make amen. sure faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The Thank you, Father, that the Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Amen. Give you peace. Turn his countenance towards you and give you peace and bless you and expect God's blessings amen. upon your life. Expect his goodness. Expect Jesus. God as a God of suddenness and surprise and expect that in your life. Expect good in your life in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys and we pray daily for you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.